Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Well, the Endurance, or excuse me, the World Endurance Championship will no longer be contested at Interlagos. Thanksgiving to me, well, does not mean football. And sports car racing will lose a heavy hitter in 2020. We've got all this and more coming up. Welcome to Speedway Report for Monday, December the 2nd. 2019 from the shores of lake norman in ray city usa mooresville north carolina i'm patrick reynolds and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing have you subscribed to our youtube channel please do uh simple search speedway report with patrick reynolds comes up hit the subscribe button we'd love to have all of you on board with each and every one of our episodes on youtube Jump on over to the Speedway Report Victory Lane Lap for Thanksgiving weekend 2019. I always loved the racing on Thanksgiving weekend. It wasn't easy to get all the results, though. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight, too. Uh, well, as we go live on Monday, we're talking about this last night in Abu Dhabi as a Sunday evening race was there. The absolute palace of Speedway won by Lewis Hamilton as he closed out the 2019 season being the champion and in championship style atop of the podium. The USAC Midgets made the uh, trip to Ventura, California for the annual Turkey Night Grand Prix. Rained out on uh, Turkey Night itself. Pushed to Friday night. Kyle Larson won the event for the third time in a row. Becomes only the fourth driver to win the event that many times or more. Now, the traditional Thanksgiving weekend races, the Turkey Derby in Wall, New Jersey, was won by big money Matt Hirschman. The Thanksgiving Classic here in North Carolina was rained out, unfortunately, and postponed until March. The Gobbler in Accord, New York, was won by Andy Pichetti. And the Leftover at 411 Motor Speedway was also canceled, fell victim to the weather. They've got the Hangover coming up at 411 uh, at the end of December. Head to their website for more details. And... I was going to say, speaking of that, we'll jump into that. I, I don't think I want to go there next. Let's talk about uh, this past weekend, Thanksgiving. Uh, boy, if you're a football fan, you were in your glory. You had three national games on Thanksgiving Thursday itself. You really could have watched football for, you know, close to 12 straight hours. If you began, well, more than that, if you went with the long, elongated pregame, on Thursday morning, but we had a kickoff at 12.30, we had kickoff at 4.30, and about 8.15, 8.30 as well. We had uh, college football Friday, college football Saturday, and then a regular slate of NFL games on Sunday. As we do this live on Monday, we got a Monday night game coming up here probably within the hour. None of that appeals to me. <laughs> I'm not a stick and ball type of guy. I'm not a football guy. I don't mind football. I just don't follow football. I had a talk with that uh, about that with the baseball recently with somebody. Uh, I was asked, why don't I like baseball? I like baseball just fine. I like football just fine. I just don't follow it. If you give me tickets to a game, say, hey, let's go catch a ball game, I'm all for it, especially during the summertime. love being outside. Just not for me to sit inside, watch sports. I have no idea who's ahead in the National Football League. But I was grateful that Formula One was on. I think several years now, not in a row, but several years now, the Formula One, I have, their calendar is lined up with the American calendar. Now, the, I have no idea if they pay attention to American holidays or not. But when they do this, they've done it several times where we have uh, Formula One on Thanksgiving weekend. As I've always said, man, I wish there was a big race on TV Thanksgiving weekend, pretty much owned by the football guys. They can have their holiday. We have Memorial Day. So that's, you know, you got yours. We got ours. I'm cool with that. But on Thanksgiving, when you don't really find the appeal of football, you wish, and I can't make it to a short track that weekend, you really wish you could throw on the tube and see a big race. And I got just that with Abu Dhabi on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or what Abu Dhabi was, Abu Dhabi was, but, uh, you know, live here on Sunday morning. I think that's great, and I'm grateful for the FIA for doing it. Even if it was totally coincidental, accidental, I don't care, whatever the word you want to hang on it. I thought it was cool, and I think it's great that we have big-time auto racing. It would be cooler if we had a big-time American series 
in action. Now, I know NASCAR, especially the Cup Series, goes on way too long. Dale Jr. said it. I said it long ago, too. So many other people have said it. NFL does it right. Uh, they got a 16-game regular season with the bye weeks. I think it takes 17 or 18 weeks to do, everybody, plus your playoffs in the Super Bowl. But the season ends leaving you wanting more. You want more. When the when the uh, NASCAR Cup season ends in Miami, we all go, whew, man, that was long. It is long. It's oversaturated. Several years ago, I was asked by an editor of a website that I used to write for to say, hey, come up with a new schedule. Your idea, bring it, imagine it, think about it, and do it. So I did. And I blew up the schedule. We went from 36 races down to about 25 or so. And most tracks, most uh, most tracks on the on the tour now stayed. However, they all each had one date. And I moved the schedule all around. I shifted it and shifted it. And about the only thing I left, I left the traditional ones the same. Darlington was on Labor Day, and I think when I did this. California still had the Labor Day race, but I left Darlington on Labor Day. I left the Coke 600 on Memorial Day weekend, and I left the Daytona 500 where it was, the tent poles. The rest of it I blew up, and I naturally moved, how would you call it, longitudinally? Is that a word? Laterally? I moved around the country to reflect the best weather I could. I started south and moved north. And then it came back south in the fall. So we're always racing possibly in the best weather that we possibly could. My point with this is is the only the only track that had two events was Daytona and it bookend the season. We began them with the Daytona 500 in February. I was all for it. We ran the entire season and we ended the Daytona five with with not the at the Daytona International Speedway. We ended ended the season with what we called at the time the Pepsi 400. I think it's the Coke has the sponsorship now. Old-timers like us, Firecracker 400, you guys know what I'm talking about. But I ended the season at Daytona with a 400-miler when I ended it on Thanksgiving night. We started in February, ran about 25 races, have lots of nights off, and or weekends off, excuse me, during the season. Uh, like we used to, remember when we had like the 30, 28, 30 race season and the people in the sport actually had a good time back then because they ran two, three races, had a weekend off, ran a couple more weeks, had a weekend off. And it happened and kept guys thriving. It kept guys energetic as well as kept the fan base energized. On the calendar, we began in February, ended in November. But during the year, there was this touch of withdrawal because we would miss a week and fans would miss the sport and want to see it back as opposed to back to back to back every weekend. You get saturated and you can overdo it, which NASCAR does. I had our season ending on Thanksgiving night. At the time, there was no uh, game for the NFL on Thanksgiving night. It was always the Detroit game at 1230 and the Dallas game at 4 o'clock. was that way for years. My proposal came in before NBC signed the deal for the NFL game on Thursday night. Thursday night, Thanksgiving night, that holiday, is one of the most watched television nights of the entire calendar year. And when also when I did this, NASCAR wasn't the destroyed, crumbling, shattered shell of itself that it is now the punchline that it is of itself right now that it used to be. It was a powerhouse. It was strong. It was still thriving and growing. And this could have worked at one time. But that's what I would have done. NBC does this deal now at Homestead. The green flag's at three. It's supposed to butt up with the seven o'clock football night in America before the Sunday night football game. My plan had the uh, green flag flying at eight o'clock on Thanksgiving night, much like the kickoff what the NFL game is now, and we controlled the night. At the time, NASCAR was strong enough. NBC was a good enough partner. They may or may not have done this, but it seemed like it would have worked if somebody had brought it to the table if we could get away from that 36-race schedule all on Sundays, or mostly on Sundays. We overdid the Saturday night stuff. Um, every time we have a good road course race, we were threatening to do road overdo road racing. Every time Eldora comes on, we want to overdo dirt racing instead of leaving things special as how they are. The schedule itself now for Cup was too saturated. My editor said, blow it up, do whatever you want. I did. I made it this, and we ended it on Thanksgiving night. And I could have seen it at the time 
where a major network had this big sporting event and championship event on Thanksgiving night decided it. Something like this, a lot of decisions along the way maybe have been a better move for the sport overall as opposed to finishing this in Miami with the four-race championship punchline, we'll call it, and then we're going to make a fool of ourselves next year in Phoenix in November. Whatever. Anyway, um, I made this in better times. I came up with the idea. I thought it would have worked at the time. I would have loved to have seen it played out. That would have been cool. I'm not a football guy. Millions of people are good for them. I'm a racing guy. I like cars and fast engines. That's my type of thing. I was looking for a major league channel and championship competing on Thanksgiving weekend. We found Formula One. It was on ESPN. I think it's fantastic. If we could have gotten rid of hold of that, you know, save NASCAR about 15 years ago, that might have stood a shot at working. I thought it would have been a cool idea. That's something I would have enjoyed as an option to that big family holiday movie or the NFL game on Sunday evening. None of which I watched, but there was no racing on either, so I didn't get to watch that. At least if it was on, it would have had a chance to succeed or fail. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. In other news, we're going to have a lot of stuff that's going to float around, I think going to revolve around the word, the magic word, money. It does anyway, right? No matter what it comes down to, we can have the surface, we can have stories and headlines and excuses and reasons and explanations. You trickle down below the surface, it's always money. Chip Ganassi is closing up his IMSA shop, closing the doors, will not compete or fill the car in uh, the 24 hours of Daytona, the 12 hours of Sebring. That stuff will be shut down. He's been with BMW, with Lexus, with Ford. Nothing for next year, which is a shame because there were so many weeks right here on this show. I can't tell you how many times we repeated the winners of Scott Pruitt and Memo Rojas. Scott Pruitt and Memo Rojas just destroyed everybody in Grand Am racing. This was during the split in North American uh, Le Mans and sports car racing. But he had, uh, even after the, the merger, a very competitive, very strong winning and championship team. Just not going to happen. Uh, a few of the guys, the key personalities that are staying on for the IndyCar program, but that is a shame. One of the strongest and most recognizable cars and teams in the IMSA paddock will not be around for 2019. As we said, money. Let's talk more about money. The World Endurance Championship will not be held in Brazil at Sao Paulo in Interlagos in 2020, but benefit for the United States fans will be moving to Austin, Texas at Circuit of the Americas. We're going to have a six-hour challenge. It will take place in late February at COTA. And I can read so into the fine print, but I'll start by reading the press release that I got right from the WEC website. Quote, very regrettably, the local Brazilian promoter for the six hours of Sao Paulo has been unable to meet his contractual obligations. And the WEC, WEC organization has been faced with no other alternative than to find a replacement venue. Furthermore, the WEC wishes to make clear that it is not experienced any major problems with the city of Sao Paulo or the Autodrome Jose Carlos Pace, which is I'd call it Interlagos. It is strictly a major issue with the local promoter. The FIA World Endurance Championship will therefore return to the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas next February. Six-hour race will take place on Sunday, the 23rd of February. This replaces the six hours of Sao Paulo as the fifth round of the 2019-2020 WEC season. This was a headline that I heard about just because I follow the sport day to day, but I even got a message on Twitter from our fan down in Brazil that I talk about from time to time, Leo, who is uh, watches this show religiously every week. Hello, Leo. Thank you for tuning in. He sent me a message on Twitter highlighting this a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna he basically says talk tonight about the change in uh, 
WEC from Brazil to Texas. And I'll and I'll I think he'll explain more about this situation. Basically, it's money. So I you am thinking that he will he rarely watches us live, but he usually watches the podcast. Often see him. Well, I told you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would subscribe to our YouTube channel as I do it, tell you at the top of every show. I would do that, but. Uh, I think he's going to do that in his weekly YouTube comments. He's got conversation going under all our shows. So if you go to this one on YouTube, you'll probably see Leo's explanation. So Leo, I do appreciate you watching us every week from Brazil. He's been with the show since the Motor Week Live days. Good to always have him. And he writes to me in English. However, English is not his first language. He English is at least a second language, if not a third language to him. He speaks primarily Portuguese, and he's a good dude. Reading his English verbatim, it's a little bit broken, and he often apologizes for his English, and I want to praise Leo for his English because as a gentleman that speaks Portuguese primarily, his English is very, very good when you compare it to me, who speaks English primarily and knows barely a few words in Portuguese. His English is far superior to my Portuguese, and he's got the guts to attempt to write in English. It's not perfect by any means, but he's far more advanced than I am, so always hats off to Leo. I know a couple of words in Portuguese, and that's it. So he actually has said that this program helps him learn about American motorsports and some English as well. I know his English is better than some folks that were born right here in the United States, but you do get a uh, word and a little bit of news from behind the curtain, so to speak, when he is in Brazil and knows a little bit more about this. I could read this release from the WEC, and I see what's going on here. I, It's obvious. It's money. However, if Leo's got a little bit more about that, boy, I would love to hear about that. When he comments on this show... I'll clue you guys in on next week on this story as it develops because the WEC said they would tell us more news as it became available uh, in the coming days, which would be sometime this week, I am assuming. We'll see. But I would love to hear Leo's take on this. And by the way, if wherever you're watching this, wherever form of social media, if you've got anything to contribute about Circuit of the Americas, I would sure love to hear that. That's cool. Maybe you got, Maybe you're watching somebody out there. You got the scoop of uh, who's cashing the checks and who owes who money. I want to hear all about that and uh, tell me a little bit more. Now, I'm going to circle back around to us talking about Thanksgiving weekend and the auto racing that is on, which major league doesn't really exist, but on the lower levels here in the United States, it certainly does. And don't chime in and harp on me that Formula One is not major league. I'm talking about American holiday, American racing, Formula One, the biggest in the world. However, there was really tough sledding on getting a hold of information on folks. Now, USAC has a very updated website, so I could follow Turkey Night down at Ventura very closely for the for the Turkey Night GP that Kyle Larson won. However, uh, 411 Speedway posted uh, just on their website that the event that the word canceled, and this was ahead of the promotions for the leftover uh, this past weekend. So I didn't know, it, there was no release or statement that said it was canceled or pr postponed for this reason, don't come. It was a little bit confusing to me as to exactly what they meant. I looked at their websites for Southern National Speedway, Accord, and Wall Stadium for results over this weekend, and as of Monday evening, there were none. There were no news on any of the events on their website onto their social media pages. Some of them had something, some of them didn't. This is a problem that comes up every now and again. When you can take the, I guess, your track's website and within a few minutes on your phone, just kind of update it about who won or the top five or the top three, something like that, it should be pretty easy to move along and just get some results on there. Especially when your events happened on Saturday and here we are Monday night, and there's still no results on there when we, most of this can be done over somebody's phone. I'm just looking for results. Actually, by this time, there should be feature stories up already, but I'm just looking for a result or a headline or maybe a listing, a rundown, a finishing order, something. Say the Turkey Derby. There's nothing there yet. I had to go elsewhere 
Uh, I had to go to you know another website or Google the results somewhere else. The first place any but any fan should read about your results is your website of the track. That's the first place. I shouldn't be going to another website to read about the results first of another track. It just makes no sense to do. This topic comes up from time to time. You got to complain. The short tracks of the world, uh, just constantly the changing times, need to hold themselves to a higher standard, a higher level. And I'm not looking for all the stories and all the photographs. But when a race is run Saturday and by Monday evening there's not even a result listed, I don't think you're doing your fans or your sponsors justice on that one. Should be a little raise your game at least a little bit more on that one. I'm gonna tip our hat to Dave Despain, Motorweek Illustrated. Wow, this show is based on the Speedway Report Racer of the Week. Uh, talked about a lot of short track racing over the Thanksgiving weekend. Talked about the Formula One race as well, and I am gonna give our racer to the week choice to a guy that we recently gave it to. This is going to be his second one in a very short period of time. That Turkey Night Grand Prix is one of the most historic and treasure trophies on the entire USAC calendar in any division. A big event for the midgets, 98 laps in California. It's had a different home at different speedways over the years, but Turkey Night Grand Prix for USAC has always been a big, big deal. Our racer of the week was the winner of this year's Turkey Night Grand Prix, Kyle Larson. He won recently here, and I'm going to give it to him again. Any guy that can wheel the midgets like that, you're always, always top-notch in my book. So everyone, in between our broadcasts, keep up on the world of racing with SpeedwayReport.com. You can check out Rhonda Beck's articles on the website. Is also our archived podcast of this show. Hook up with me on social media. On Facebook, we're at Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds or at Racers Reunion. On Twitter, I'm at Speedway Pat or at Speedway Report. And these shows are also on the podcast or on the forum in racersreunion.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Big thanks to everyone on the Facebook live feed for joining the conversation during the show tonight. I would like to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter. I'm at Speedway Pat. Now, if you are on Facebook Live right now, bop on over to the Drag Racing List page where Drag List Live is coming up in a few moments. Bill, John, and Barb got you covered with Straight Liners Talk. I'll be back live here on Facebook in one week, December the 9th, with a look at the final day of the Rained Out Turkey Derby and all of the Snowball Derby from Pensacola, Florida that we can squeeze in. Thank you all for watching. I'll see everybody next week.